Welcome to Americana Quo, writer to writer. Please like and subscribe and tell a friend that likes to subscribe. Today, I have the honor of sitting down with a musician who writes music and was educated to our youth for some time and does a podcast titled Prone to Argue. His love for music is the reason why I wanted to give him a call so we can break the usual format and do a deep dive of artists that we both appreciate musically, socially, not quite sure, but with this episode, we break down the lyrics into the genius of Kanye West. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome my guest, Wilson, Dwayne Wilson. How you doing, brother? I'm good. That was a, that was a heck of an intro, man. I was like, dang, okay. I did. These are some of the things you've accomplished, my brother. I was like, I did all of that. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> all right, did, did, I, did I miss anything? Did I make a mistake? I mean, I, I, I know nah, no, not I know you do music. I know you to be a teacher for a bit. You know, what I, I mean, mean that's, so. that's it, man. I teach in different ways, and and um, I try to I try to inspire. Um, she was actually part of our educational system at one point, so it was like you got oh, to yeah. see see those things for yourself. It's like, yo, I don't want to do this. I don't yeah. know. Well, so I, the funny thing is, I, I think I'm going to go back into it, or I think I want to want to go back back into it, um, especially with the pandemic going on. Like, there's a need for teachers. For real um, teachers to like be there and be supportive of the of yeah, the kids, yeah. Yeah, so um, I, I think I'm about to see if I could find find a place. I mean, I know it's going. It's pretty you much know what I think Zoom. you would have been great at is being like a guidance counselor, like to reach those few kids that like yeah needed steps in the right direction. I can see you uh, being a great a great person for that. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of those things you can do without being a guidance counselor. No, 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 but we we all we all need a check. So I was like, if you oh, have to do it, I would say guidance counselor would have been dope lame for you if you wanted to get back into it. That's all I'm saying. That's a that's an interesting idea. I guess I looked at it like I want to be able to to like be multifaceted. So like the teacher, you could be a little bit of a guidance counselor, you could be a little bit of a principal, you could be like you know what I'm saying, you could do a little bit of everything. And then when it when it, the real stuff comes, it's like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it off all to right. y'all and let you let y'all handle the rest. Right, that's true too. I didn't think of it like that, but no, you're right. No, but that's an interesting idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it up here. <laughs> so, for your prone to argue crew, how are you guys doing? What's what's new? I think you guys release an episode once a week on what day? Uh, so most of the time it's Thursday. Um, okay. Yeah, I've been. It's and it's really been me who's caused the inconsistency. Sometimes it comes out like Friday morning. Um, this week I actually put two out because we had a conversation with, uh, and I don't even want to call him up and coming. He'd been doing, he'd been rapping for, for years. Um, but, uh, Drown Millie, he's an artist from Amityville, but he lives in Cali right now. And, um, he just came out like just, just hanging out or whatever. But, um, we had a good conversation and I, it was maybe about three hours or so. And it oh, was just, you had a, a convo like we like we've had when I've been a guest on your show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like we started going into music and started talking different stuff, and I'm just like, I, I don't want to cut this. Like I don't, I don't want to cut so much of this conversation. Um, and I was like, you know what? We just, I'm just gonna split it in two. I put some out. I think I did Tuesday, and then I did yesterday. Um, so I kind of I did it differently this week, but um, this and this next week might be another two as well. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Because we yeah. have one re that we recorded um, Sunday, and then we have another one that we're recording tomorrow. So do you think you having, like, part one or part two brings in the most views most of the time? Or is it, like, which one do you think bring in, like, your most your most people of listening, your um, listenership? You said what? I'm, so, uh, I'm bring, sorry. Re rephrase what brings What brings in your, your listenership? Like, when you have, like, two-part episodes or, like, one whole single episode most of the time or oh no it'll be one because i mean we i usually don't we usually don't do the two um and i, and I say i because i'm the one who edits the podcast um so right. the only reason i do that and i've done it very rarely but if we have like a conversation like um even though it never came out because there was an audio issue but like during the george floyd like we were watching we were watching the um the the protests like on tv so we would just oh, and in real time yeah and i didn't want to edit any of that out it was just like y'all just you know talk say how you feel and um we was here for like five we was here actually at my house usually we do it uh somewhere else but we was here for like five hours man it was a long it was a long time um so yeah. i was just gonna cut that 
you know, a few, it ended up not working out anyway, because the audio, something happened with the audio, but um, I think that's the powers to be, they were, they were watching. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, like that, it, it's stuff like that. Like if it's something really important or like we had uh, uh, Millie over here. So it was like, well, we could just have, we could just have one where it's like, a you know, chopped up into a few because, you know, it's a guest here. So um, right. I feel like I we might've done the same thing with yours too. Uh, no, no, you, you definitely chopped it, but I think there was sometimes we had to stamp it because of um. Oh, because of <laughs> squid, one of squiddy your, squid, squid. Yes, squid. one of your co-hosts were was you know doing their thing. Yeah, shout out to Squid, shout out to G Five. Squid is he that 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 boy is something else, man. Yeah. He's been more tame as of late, though. Okay. Yeah, he's I mean, the next the next time I'm a guest, I'll let you know <laughs> if that's true. <laughs> if, if it's true. <laughs> I guess we'll figure. I guess we'll find out then. Oh, that's funny. So let's get into Kanye West. Um, I'm kind of breaking format as far as usually I, I ask about your writing and things like that. But Kanye right. West, I know, is one of your favorite artists of all time. So I wanted to, um, mm-hmm. yes, kind of get your thoughts and your opinions as I break as we break down his writing. So my first question is: Well, first, can we make it clear we're not talking about? No, none Kanye of his social. First- yeah, I just yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, That's, we might we might touch a thing or two based off some lyrics here, but it's not gonna be like, yo, hmm. how do you feel about Kanye now? And um, are you canceling? I'm not. No, I'm no, not no, no. That. This I've is this like is this is already. this is a music appreciation. This is has yes. nothing to do and and words and lyric appreciation. Yes. By him and the other collective minds that wrote some of his lyrics for him, if they're yeah. in here. So. Right. That's it. Here we go. So I guess my first question to you is, what's the first lyric of Kanye West that comes to your mind? What's the first what? Lyric. The first lyric of Kanye West that comes to your mind. Uh, <laughs> right now, I mean, I, this is mad lyrics in it, but I guess the, 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 the first one is, um, because <laughs> it's one of the ones I actually had pulled up here. They, they call me Edward Scissorhands because I'm trying to cut um, if she claims she got cramps, I'm gonna get you to suck. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's Was one that, of the first ones that came to my head because that the first, fir- sorry, no, continue. I was gonna I was say, gonna when, I, when I remember when I first heard that song, I was like, I first of all, I don't know who Edward Scissorhands is, and then the second thing is, I'm like, oh, this guy's this guy's disrespectful, <laughs> like, this guy's going there, and then when you listen to the rest of that song, he's that guy's nuts like that's what that's what i first thought but mm-hmm. i liked it because i mean you're a kid like i was i might, I might have been like 12 13 when i first heard that song yeah um, it's an underground song so it's like you hear that it's underground and everybody doesn't know it so it kind of like right. catches you like whoa this is i was not expecting right. this you got something to tell you to go to your friends and be like oh you heard this the kind of mm-hmm. thing yeah mm-hmm. Well, so my first lyric is "Lock yourself in a room, do five beats a day for three summers." I deserve to do these numbers from Spaceship. Uh, that's a different world, like Cree Summers. Yeah, you know, it's funny thing. There's a lot of songs that it took me a little bit to like get because well, because we were kids. But it's like, why was it so impactful? And then when you really break down the lyrics, it's like, what's more dedication than that to get where you want to be? You know what I'm right. saying? It's right. like, you know. Yeah, like I'm in my head, I'm like, what is a Cree, what is a Cree summer? I don't know, like what the hell was that? And it's like, oh, that's a person. <laughs> um, there's that one, there's a song named um, well, you're a fan too. Uh I Wonder off of graduation. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I ain't get it at first. I'm like, what is this? Cause he wasn't rapping regular until like the second verse. Like the first verse it was like <laughs> weird, it was slow. I'm like, what, what the what the hell is he doing? But now, yeah. man, I jam that joint to the well, I haven't listened to the album in a while, but I I jam that like at the, like the highest decibel. I love that song. Yeah, I I did a Kanye appreciation on my headphones like three weeks ago when I asked you, "Hey, you mind doing this podcast for me?" I was breaking down Kanye, and I just went back to some of his old catalog. I was like, "Yeah, he was onto something." And maybe yeah. maybe he called Lightning in a Bottle. I know we a lot of us always wish he could go <laughs> back to that type of music, but maybe mm-hmm. Maybe it was really just a moment in time where it was just a download that he couldn't shake, and and that's how we got the music. Maybe you know. Well, well, the interesting thing about Kanye is that there's so many people that I don't want to say attribute their career, but I guess you could say that they were. They look at it. They look back and they say, 
well, what was the first thing that you heard that made you want to do music? For J. Cole, it was college dropout. For Drake, it was whatever. You know what I'm saying? You could ask Kid Cudi. You could ask Travis Scott. You could, you could ask Uzi. Like, there's so many people that they'll go back and say, that Ye album was the first album that made me say, I can do this. Because when you look at all those people, that, that sound that we have now, um, well, there's, there's a whole bunch of different sounds now. Um, little sidebar, I think hip hop is in a great place. I know a lot of people don't feel that way, um, but you can really be any part of hip hop and prosper today. Um, right. And I bring that up because I think Kanye is a huge part of that. I think guys like him, Jay-Z, um, uh, even guys like 50 Cent, who I don't think he gets enough of his flowers um, when it comes to music, partly because of his fault, because he is a little nuts. But I think a lot of those guys, they, they brought the sound to different areas, to different parts of the world. And that kind of opened up people's ears and it opened up people's minds, um, which then when you give that energy out, you get it back. So I think hip hop, we were able to accept different forms of music, different forms of sounds, different forms of pitches. And um, it just changed to what it is now. Um, so yeah, I think, I think you still, you'll get a little bit of that. Like, I don't think he's quite the artist that Kanye was, but you get like a chance, for example. Um, and obviously you hear a lot. I mean, Chance was, he's from Chicago. I think I think what helped Kanye is that he knew how to make beats tailor-made for his voice and stuff. So I think those things help. That is very but the more The more I think about Kanye and what he evolved to is, I don't know if he's truly an originator no more. I think now he's like, he has to catch inspiration from somebody. Like, he now needs a muse more than him just creating all feelings. That's it. So I'm going to ask you. I mean, I know it's your show, but let me ask no, you. No, no, please. Do you, think, do you think that that's a new thing? Because some No, I think it started since his fourth album, since 808 Heartbreaks, when he got Kid Cudi. Mm, it's like after that, say, it's yeah. like you started having muses instead of you just going off your own spirit of what made you feel good. Right. See, the funny thing is, I was going to say that some people think that it's been a thing for him his entire career. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. So, like, you go all the way back to, you go all the way back to, like, college dropout or before college dropout. Well, and, let me rephrase it then. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. He might have had muses, but they were muses of the past. They weren't muses of somebody that nobody knew yet. Like, I think Got you. Okay. Cuddy, yeah. Scott... <laughs> phone nah, that's okay i don't even know how to turn it off see that you, right. this this point like we in a new time now we're talking about a new time of music i don't even know how to use a house phone anymore i'm trying to end the call i don't know how to end the call it's crazy it's crazy crazy um yeah i don't i don't know sorry audience this is <laughs> this is what it's like in real life you know all right it's, okay. it stopped finally thank god all so right. cuddy cuddy travis scott are like two old muses that like I mean two new muses that I think changed his music, but it like that wasn't Same. nowhere near Kanye sound. Where right, when he saying. was doing more of tribe and de la kind of ideas and concepts, mm -hmm. they're in the past, but he revolutionized their sound and brought it better for like samples he would use. You know what I'm saying? Like right. even Talib. Um, yeah, but like that's def, yeah. But, but those are people older. that that were oh. looking for those soul samples, which is really his alley. You know what I'm saying? Like exactly, that's the other thing, right? All these new, all these new sounds you're into, it's like it's not cool, it's not great to me, and it's not in the hand. It's just your the music he's choosing aren't the ones I care to listen to for for a whole hour at this point in my life. You know what I'm saying? When you say new, is because. Well, See, when people, some people say the old yay, and when they say the old yay, they're talking about 808s. I don't look as 808s and Heartbreak as the old yay. No, that's, so, so when you that's say old new, of the new stuff to me. Right. So I was going to say, when you say new, you're not interested in 808s. 808s never, if you can't sing, I don't want you to sing. Like, I've always been that person. Like, <laughs> like you can't you sing, Squid, don't. You and, you and Squid uh, from the podcast, you y'all would have a... A field day with that boy because i mean well, nah, he's not, like he's but a lot of people on. a lot of people can't sing but they do it now you know what I mean? and he influenced because, that part of it yeah him really yeah, cutting cutty. right and well no right. really really cutting let's be honest like well, yeah. a lot of those melodies is, is, is a cutting melody right even like drake drake gets a lot of credit for that and deservedly so i think what drake did in the game 
I think he was able to help make these sounds um, more mainstream. Because 808s and Heartbreak, the only thing that was mainstream about it was that it was Kanye. But other than that, especially in, in his lane in hip hop, uh, but yeah. other than that, it was seen, nobody knew what to like call it. Because it's like, it's a rapper, but he's kind of singing and it's kind of electro pop, but it's kind of not like, what exactly do we call this? It's the same thing with Kid Cudi. Kid Cudi can rap. Like he has rap songs, even on his first album. But when it starts, it literally sounds like something, and I don't, I've never been in space, but it sounds like something that when I go to space, this is what I would hear. You know what I'm right. saying? I got it's, you. It's also interesting that you bring up um, Cuddy and, I mean, Kanye and a new sound because, uh, oh, you're getting the exclusive. Uh, tomorrow on the podcast, we're going to talk about Kid Cuddy's new album. And I kind of feel the same way now, or a similar way now, about Cuddy because I'm a huge Cuddy fan. Like a huge, huge Cuddy fan. And these first two albums to me is is untouched. But like after that, I don't care about the wizard. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the wizard. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. I just think I'm not saying they didn't get better technically with their sound with their stuff, but it's like something that isn't connecting for me with them. And it's not about them not being able to create new music. I just think whatever their their muses were at the time was 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 amazing for that moment. I don't know if they could, they're trying to recreate these moments and they don't go well. And I think mm -hmm. and I don't, I'm not too sure for Kid Cudi. That's too new for me. I haven't even really listened to it like that. And this is not coming out to like late February, just a FYI, just in case. Mm -hmm. But um Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, cuz okay. I try to stockpile a few episodes, you know, it's a got lot you. just okay. to got like, you. do them all. Okay. So, with Kanye it's a muse issue for me, I think. It's like whoever you're inspired by ain't the person to be inspired by. Not if you want to keep those that really listen to you from day one. Now, if you want new people, by all means, go ahead and do that. Can I be honest with you, man? Yeah. You think I'm being too hard on him? No, I was going to say the opposite. I don't <laughs> think... No, I'm serious. I don't, I don't think it's a muse thing. I think he mm. just copy. I think right now he's just copy he's in a copycat mode. mode. He's not yeah. even thinking of nothing original. I ain't gonna lie. And that's the pro. Like 808s, even though you hear Cuddy, Cuddy is like, like I said earlier, he's very in like it's all spacey, right? When I first hear 808s, it doesn't all sound spacey. Like it has different elements of different things. A little bit of club in here. A little bit of like he was speaking about um, his song "Amazing" off of 808s, and. He said it could, you know, you can make this even into a country song. And I heard somebody do a country cover and I was like, you know what? I, I hear it. Like, I, I can see, I can see what, because that's the mode he was in. Like, I want to make music that isn't just one genre and can be different genres. You know what I'm saying? You can't really, like, if you do a rap song, uh, depending on the song, it can only, it will only be a rap song. So that's what he was going for with 808s. But what are, um, what are his is, classics, though? They're all rap. I don't... Well, people okay, debate so, it away as a classic. For me, it's it's a no. Well, okay, so this is how I look at it. Because I... Well, first, well, I'll make this clear, too. I love 808s. So I, I'm one of those people that, like, I love... Like, that was the time I was in high school. I was depressed. Um, I wanted to kill myself. I all no, the I think I was, I was. I was. I was like at a senior. My, I think I was in freshman college at that time. So for me, it wasn't. Yeah, that was my. Like that. that was my senior year. Yeah, that was my senior year. Um, and senior year was tough. Uh, for I mean, for it's tough for a lot of people because you're thinking about going to another part of your life and things about to change. At the yeah. time, too, like colleges weren't accepting me, so I was nervous about that. Um, I was in love with a girl that had that wanted no parts of me. So I was like, oh. It was a perfect album for me. <laughs> we've all been there. I feel like yeah. almost every, like the first two albums of Drake, every time a Drake album dropped, I, I was like breaking up with someone. Like, it was like yeah, right? A, exactly. <laughs> it was like a funny thing at that point. Boy, when that Take Care came out. Oh, yeah. Man. Forget about it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was in them fields, boy. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I was in the midst of being in love when Take Care came out. And then I felt <laughs> out of love. Dirt like when it was still like big, so that's yeah. when like and then um I mean without saying too much oh damn I might already say too much well whatever I'm just gonna say it um I don't think she'll see this um let's just say that the song Crew Love the song Crew Love came to fruition I just oh, leave it there. Uh, 
Not with anybody. Yeah. You not with anybody like. No, no, no. Like, but still, just anybody associated with the town doesn't feel good. So no, I can imagine that being yeah, tough. Yeah. So tough pill to like, swallow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't really tough for me. I was just like, oh well. I mind. I'm like, all right. Well, you're a clown, and he's a clown. <laughs> That's yeah. how I looked at it. Like y'all just y'all are just like y'all just clown and clowny as hell. But so where are they now? Are they are they are they still together or? <laughs> you know how guys do the girl. You know how uh, you know how got. So I mean, she got, got what she was asking for. Yeah, and by the way, I'm not saying that's right, audience. I'm not saying that's right at all. At <laughs> all, I make that clear. I think it was. I think it was. I think it was very rude what he did. But. Yeah. The what? grass ain't always green on the other side, right? Hey man, I got hey, you. Hey man, yo, when when Gary see this, he gonna be like, "Why'd you bring that?" <laughs> see, the funny thing is, right? So, so if you want, we can stop now and time time stamp this and get this out nah, of here if you want. Okay. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> um, so when we were younger, Gary and I, and that's G five um, that were brought up early for the podcast. He and I were like very much like we 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 patterned ourselves after like Jay-Z and Kanye. Like he's like my big brother, even though he's like two months older than me. Like he, <laughs> uh, but he always did have a lot more life experience than I did. Um, just yeah, like his he, personal, yeah, personal home stuff. So like, he just knew more about life than me. Right. And there's definitely been times where I, I go a little, a little over and he's like, Yo, he's, like, chill. he's like, yo, what do you, what, what do, you do? It's the moment. You remember the moment when Kanye walked on stage the second time and it walked off and everybody was laughing? Yeah. I don't remember that. Uh, it was when Beck, when Beck won. And you see, like, they show Jay and Beyonce's, like, reaction. And you see Beyonce like, no, not again. And you just see, you just see Jay like this, like, no, no, please not. <laughs> and, then I, and then he left. So then everybody started laughing and stuff. So it was funny. Yeah. But... I feel like when we were younger, that was Gary to me every day. He was just yeah. like, "No, no, no, don't, not, 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 not here. This is, <laughs> this is not the time." <laughs> right. um, there was a girl, little sidebar. There was a girl that for Valentine's Day, the same girl that I was depressed about in senior year. I bought her chocolate. I bought it a big bear. I, I bought, I bought this girl Jordans, bro. Jordans mm. for Valentine's Day. You go ahead, sneak up so she can walk out of your life. I've done that. Fair, Don't worry. Fair, oh, that, oh, <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to use that. Avoid it's true, it. though. That's, that's, that's what happens. That's a fire line. That's you never heard of that line. superstition? You don't buy no one's sneakers or shoes because that's how they walk out your life? I've never heard that before. So I guess somebody <laughs> used it. Somebody probably used it in a rap already, man. But I'm definitely, I, I don't care. I'm going to use that. That's, that's funny. Like that. Yeah, that, I, and that was a time where he told me, yo, you're bugging. Don't do it. Don't get it. And I was like, all right, I got you. I'm not going to get it. <laughs> well, I, tried, well, I drove to that. I drove to Foot Locker so quick. I was like, nah, man, he don't get it. He don't understand. <laughs> and I feel like that is that was us for a long time. And then I got older and realized I'm not Kanye West and I don't want to be Kanye West. Um, right. So that all changed. But um, sorry, we went. I went way off topic there. But no, I, all good. I, feel, I feel what you're saying about uh, Kanye during that time because it was just such a crazy switch. It's like you went from graduation, which is still one of the greatest albums I've ever heard in my life. His first two is undeniable. You could put them in whatever order you want. I would even say um, number five, Dark Twisted Fantasy. Like that's an album that to me was Kanye's best rapping. Like his highest rapping ability was on that album. Right. Um, coincidentally, of course, that's also when it seemed like a lot of the writers came around. But who was more, his? Who, who was his muse for that one? I feel like it was Pusha T and the I, Good Writing Crew. You you do know Kanye very well because at one point he was my favorite, and then it was like, yo, this fall off is, is so bad. It's like I can't even. Now it's like your your flagship artist, Big Sean, is now like one of my favorites because it's like he's more of what you would have been if you kept going than right. In That's, my opinion, no, I agree with that. Um. I would say right now some of my favorites, like I'm a I'm a huge Kendrick guy. Mm -hmm. Um but out of that class, it's hard for me to pick between Kendrick and Cole. Cause Kendrick, I think, 
if we're for just me, talking, for me, it's Cole personally. No, continue, but for me, it's Cole. See, the thing about Cole is Cole knows how to connect with. Um, excuse me, Cole knows how to connect. I don't know what it is, man. He knows how to connect like personally. Very he connects well. more to like East Coast kids because he went to St. John's and he has a lot of those type of mm-hmm. stories of like have to deal with the cold, not having the heat on, like. Those little moments where you go through them in your own life and you hear someone else talk about them, they resonate more, I think, on the Eastern Seaboard than than Kendrick that's talking about a beautiful place with, like, wickedness of just individuals. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just how I feel about it. It's like I relate more to Cole because he connects the dots more for me as if he was born and raised on the East Coast. And, like, even him being raised in a small town similar to ours, that way it's like it don't have to be... It don't have to be so gutter, but for some reason, some people just make it that way. But it's like, it's a choice. You get me? And like in his right, music, right, we hear right. that it's a choice. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, And I think the fact that he yelled DeVille, and I'm like, he from Amityville? I didn't know what <laughs> Ville he was. I'm like, in my head, Amityville's the only DeVille that he would be talking about. And right. then you look up, and it's like, oh, I'm like Fayetteville. Like, I've never heard of it, but I right, like y'all, like if you from Fayetteville, bro, like y'all brothers, like we brothers and sisters, like what's up, right. you know? Yeah. Um, but I think I think the thing for me is that when Kendrick first came out, Good Kid, Mad City related to it also related to this that same experience because you know as you said Amityville is lit when you live here it's not like the most like like dangerous place in the world no 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 uh, but there's people that can make it that way if you're not on your p's and q's right it, so there it's is, more there's of, definitely there's definitely danger there's definitely right. danger on this on this block and on this block, but then when you cross right over, there's never any danger there. It's, it's perfectly fine. Everybody living all cool and peachy. Yeah, I mean, that's when you know it's a choice, right? It's a mind state. It's a, it's yes. a choice of... Um, it's a choice, right? And and that's where I think a lot of people that struggle with trying to get out of neighborhoods like ours or even neighborhoods that are worse, it's like once you stop thinking about survival and start thinking about living, you, your your feelings on life changes and like right. your mentality changes. But it's like it's hard to like get there if you're always struggling. So it's like I can't speak to no one else besides me and my family in the house I grew up in. It's like those things became choices if you want to do good or bad. They weren't necessarily I have to do bad to get good. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't that's a, that's I can't speak for everyone else. I know everyone else had different circumstances on the right. neighborhood in the neighborhood I grew up in, but for me. Those those were like they became choices for me. It wasn't about I had to do that to like make it. Right, and that so that everything you just saying it kind of reminded me of um this other Kanye lyric. So this is verse two from um Crack Music with uh the game. Even though the game had like two bars in it, but whatever. Um, he said, and it starts uh from the place where the father's gone, the mother's is hardly home, and and the Madi and the Madi goons lock us up in the Audi home. How the Mexicans say we just trying to party homes. They want to lock us all in the box like styrofoam. Uh, for those who don't know, Audi Home is, it's, because uh, I looked it up. It's something, actually, well, it's, this is genius. So I guess I can see it right here. Um, the Audi Home, the Audi Home. Well, first, the Marigones that lock us up in the Audi Home. The, lo- the Marigone is, is a, it's a, I guess, a politician. Oh, yeah, from the House of Representatives, she's known for her tough stance on uh, gang crime in Chicago. So I love how he tied he tied his personal experience of living in Chicago um, with that, I guess, grandiose experience of, like, Black people being locked up in, like, the, the crab in the barrel mentality. That's how I read that line when, when I first heard it. Um, right. There's so many layers, there's so many layers to it. But one of, the, one of the things is when you lock people into a certain environment, even if there's parts of it that, well, it's not that bad over here, but it's worse over there. It's like, we live in Amityville, but if anybody who's from Long Island, you hear wine dance, you're like, oh, nah, it's nuts over there. Like, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like, like, they be wilding. They be bugging out over there. Right. Um, but you kind of feel connected, even though, until you had a car, when, you, when we were in school, if you were, let's say, if you walk to wine dance, like, it would take you dumb long. Like, it's like, it's mad. It's no, like yeah. Away. When you hear about the different towns, it sounds like different journeys. It's like, yeah, I went on a journey today. I walked from here <laughs> to, like, 
not the people <laughs> into the mall or like different yeah, things right. like that. <laughs> and so no, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So I so, yes, I, I, I get I get that 100 percent Yeah. So what's the first song that made you feel a connection with Kanye West? For me, it's All Falls Down and Um Never Let Me Down with Jay-Z. Mm. I think that's what um Jay-Z never let me down. I might be wrong. I mean, I, I guess I would just say the first the first big one, through the wire. Cause when I first heard it, the first thing I thought was, this is like nothing that's out right now. Because everything, even like Ludacris was talking about guns and all of that stuff. Um, but Kanye was the first rapper that I heard. And that dropped like late 03. And you know what was going on in 03. It was a lot going on. 50 Cent came out. He was, he you know, the, the cover. That was the first album I, I bought was Get Rich or Die Trying. Um, when I right. went to... Um, I'll just say that organization because I don't want to go too much into what they were. But the organization, you know what I'm talking about, uh, that you were part of as well. Yeah, um, it's a not-for-profit camp organization. Yeah. I'll leave it so at we, that. So we went there, and every every year, my mom would like, okay, like we're gonna we're gonna get you some type of music. The first year, my first ever album, which was a tape, was Lil Bow Wow's Doggy Bag, which was which was hilarious. Which is hilarious when you look back at it now. <laughs> Yeah, but when you're a kid, you're supposed to listen to kid music. You're not supposed exactly. to really listen to. Yeah, but going from that, that was 2002. <laughs> that was my first year. The next year, I was like, I want that one with the guy who has the bullet hole in his glass. And my mom looked at me like, You are crazy. Know. What you talking about? I'm not getting that for you. Oh, my back is can we curse on here. Um, we can now. Don't worry. I put an explicit sign on it. Don't worry about it. All right. Cool. I curse a lot too. It's just I try All not right. to on the podcast. Yeah, I try not to as well. On well, I'm trying not to on here. I think that was the first time. But um, yeah, I, I she was like, we can get the clean version where there's no bullet hole on it. So I was like, I got that clean and I got Nas is clean, right? Um, and I also got Fab Street Dreams as well. But listening to that. Then that Jay Z's retiring black album comes out, so that was that's a classic. Yeah, that's what, classic. That's what you when you really remember music. Yeah. Oh my. Oh my god. Like um, that. Oh, like oh four, oh five, oh oh three, oh four, oh five range is when you start falling in love with who you think is gonna be your, your favorite artist for like the next five to ten years. No, right. you're right. And one day we got to talk about Jay Z versus Eminem because that was a topic on our on our last podcast. But um, so anyway, so I'm I'm listening to all this stuff and I liked the beats. I liked the words. I felt like I was learning an experience from people that were like me who lived in areas similar to mine. Mm -hmm. But there was still something missing because I like I couldn't connect to to none of that. I didn't I didn't know what the I didn't know what they were talking about. Like when Some Jay of the was, lingo. Yeah. Yeah, like when, when Jay was talking about um uh I got I, I put the gun to you, I let it sing you along and let it hum to you. The un, other one sing along, that was a duet and you wet. I didn't know what wet, I didn't know what he was talking about. It just sounded cool. Like you know what I'm right. saying? Um trust me, there's the, people to this day that act like they know everything about Jay-Z that don't know the metaphors and stuff. Like it, yeah, it, it, even, his music that, pretty deep. Even that song threat, like you get into yeah. these homophones and all type of different Eng English literary elements in it. It's it's crazy. But um so then all of a sudden, I see, I'm watching the TV. And I don't remember where I was. The first time I heard it, we were in Florida. Mm -hmm. And there's, we were like on a yacht for, I was, I was on a retreat for something. I can't remember what exactly it was. It was like a school retreat, family, like what was this? It might've been for martial arts. I think that's what it was actually. Okay. Um, yeah, they, they used to do like a seminar where we would go like on a boat or whatever, but I don't think they do it anymore. But um, well, especially not now. <laughs> but yeah, we were when we were on there. I'm sitting down, and I had heard like bits and pieces of Through the Wire before, mm -hmm. but I'm sitting down and watching the TV, and then it might have been 106 in Park or something. They introduced it, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna get to like listen to this for the first time. So I'm sitting down and on through the wire, the video, the story comes up about um, him being in a, almost in a nearly fatal car crash and blah, blah, blah. And he made the song two weeks later. First of all, I'm sold right there. I'm like, he made a song after being in a car accident? What? So at first, I'm, that's the first thing. Then I'm listening to him rap. And it sounded like, this is going to sound weird. He sounded like the coolest square that I've ever heard in my life. And oh, I say it that, that way because 
And, and, and I say yeah. it that way because that's how I related to it. Because, like, I'm, I'm going to be real with you, bro. Like, I don't, I don't like, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm going to give you your flowers. You was one of the cooler people when we was coming up. Like, you always had, oh, like, no, the Ill's. Nah, you trying to be, nah. you, had, you always had the sneakers and the ill shirts. You always had, you, you walked around, like, like, you just, like, bro, like, like, I'm out here. Like, I'm ill. Like, so. Nah, so, I'm never trying to. <laughs> no, nah, you was, no, you was, you, you was a, you was a good guy, though. Like, you never, like, looked down on nobody. You was just cool. You know what I'm saying? For yeah. me, I felt like I walked around like I had two feet. I walked like I walked like th- well, I walk like this still with my feet like that. Um, I wasn't. I I did. And plus, this is the other thing you got to remember: where you lived, that was one yeah. of the rougher parts of of Amityville. Yeah. Everybody over there was pushing weight and dealing drugs and shooting. Yeah. So that's what. Yeah. So in my head, I'm like, okay, this guy Britain is cool. He's cool with us. <laughs> And he got sneakers and he killing people. Oh, it's, it's lit! Like, you know oh no, nah, I was never, I was never part of that yeah, part yeah. of the crew. That, you, know, when you, you know, when you're a kid, you then you just, you know, yeah, you you, you think you think more of it than it is, yeah, exactly. So in my head, I could never be that or any of the other people that were around there. So yeah. when I see this guy, I'm like, well, I could be that. And mm-hmm. that connection comes. That connection also comes with the fact that I wanted to do music from the first time I heard Hot 97. It was like a TV show. My brother comes in and he was like, what is this you listening to? And it was, I was listening to like um, Z100 or something like Britney Spears. And just like on a TV show, he was like, you need to listen to this. Press the button. Right. Hot 97 comes on. <laughs> and, I'm, and I didn't know what they were talking about or what they were saying, but it was Nas's Got Yourself a Gun. That was uh, the first song that I like actively listened to while I was on the radio. Mm-hmm. And I felt it immediately, and I was like, "I need to do this, but yeah. I can't do this because I don't have a gun." So <laughs> that's literally what. I, that's literally how I thought about it. Right. You know? And then my other, my oldest brother, that was my brother Damien. My oldest yeah. brother, he said to me like, "Dwayne, whatever you do, make sure you don't become a rapper because these guys getting shot left and right." Um, this was in like 2002 so I'm like alright well I guess that's over for me being a rapper and then, <laughs> so when Kanye comes out it opens my mind to all first I didn't know that there was an underground I didn't know what the hell that underground I ain't never heard uh, of that right. so, you were like a casual listener at that point not searching for your own type yeah, of like I, I music didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know any of that stuff but when he when he said like he comes out and then he's talking about uh, Quali or Quali I put him on songs with Jay-Z I'm like, well, who's Quay Lee? And then I realized, oh, Talib Kweli. And then I look up his stuff. Then I find most Def. Then, I, like, I, then you start, then you start going down. That you went through hole. like different rabbit holes that's not on YouTube. Right. Where you have to like find the music, ask your big brothers or your cousins, like, yo, you got such and such. You talk about that, like stuff like that. And then also 2004 when his album came out. That was also when LimeWire came out. You remember LimeWire, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure this is, if, if when there's any kids listening to this, they're like, LimeWire, what the hell is that? Like, uh, man. My brother got us a few um, threats to get sued and shit because of, oh of illegal downloads of, like, music Bro. and different TV shows. Yeah, and so, and you know what you had to do, right? LimeWire came out, and to avoid all of that, you had to get FrostWire, because that was another one. Mm-hmm. It was another joint. And it was, it was literally the same thing, but I guess they were, like, they were, like, hidden more or whatever. So mm-hmm. I got Frostwire. And then basically everything, my brother's room is like right across over there. Everything that he had on his floor, it was, it was um 36 Chambers was on the floor from Wu Tang. Oh, and Wu Tang Forever was on the floor. Um, um Hard Knock Life Volume 2 was on the floor. Nas, he, well, he had like every, he had every Jay-Z and Nas album up until like up until like Blueprint and still Matic. He had every Jay-Z and Nas album. Then he was getting older. I think he just wanted to stay away from rapping, violence, and stuff like that. Um, but he had all those albums on the floor, and I came right here where I'm sitting right now with my old computer and downloaded everything. Right. And once again, my eyes were opened up to a new world. And then when Kanye came out, man, I, I just started to find just different. I, and then I found Common. Who's one of my favorite rappers? I know uh, it's hard to. When, when nah, I get like, it. Like, like common, it's tough to like really get it because 
he's another person that's like in the stars. Like, I feel like when you're listening to him, you, you gotta be really, 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 really high. <laughs> and you gotta read a lot of books like because because you get confused. you have to be like, intentional when you're listening to um comment it's like it's a choice it's not just yes. oh let me just let him play it's like no let me listen to what he has to say kind of thing. right you also feel bad too like you feel like you feel like you're not doing enough with your life you feel like you're not treating your woman right like when you listen to comment but that's what i got into all of that after listening to uh to to kanye uh, but yeah I, I know that i this was a super long-winded answer but through the wire was the was the first song and it, no 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 but i like that you you wrote those things down and that you think that of me <laughs> is amazing to me because i don't oh, of course, you know man. you don't see yourself like that when someone else talks so i appreciate that bro you never heard come on you've heard that before from maybe from you because you're like a, a good guy that would say something but like, <laughs> i don't i don't think of it like that you know what i mean like oh, when okay. you when, interesting that's all hmm. so i guess my next question is um What's your number five on your top five of all Kanye verses? My number five. So you asked me this, and it's 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 kind of yeah. a tough question. Just I mean, not it's obviously a really tough question because obviously I love so many Kanye songs. But I think verses. So like, my, let me tell you a little bit of my criteria, so then it maybe give you a better thought process. Right. I'm talking about verses. I'm not talking about necessarily the beat, but like the particular words he used. Yes. to convey that message like yes, i don't like so yeah so that's because every song obviously well and I, now, and nowadays I, I feel like every song has one verse with like right. eight bars now but i would I say i think when i told you that my concern was that like yo he's not even the best of some of the favorite verses that i have of his mm -hmm. he got smoked <laughs> like like whenever he had a guest artist on sometimes he got really smoked compared to like the lyrical ability even though yeah. He yeah. might say something impactful. It wasn't what that other person was saying if you look back 10 years later. Yeah, it's kind of like when you think of, um, like, so appalled on Dark Twisted Fantasy, mm -hmm. and you rapping with Jay-Z, Pusha T, and then you got a new, young, hungry Saha the Prince. All right. There was no way he was going to have the best verse in that song. He no. probably has the least favorite, even though his verse, that whole song is a classic song, but he wasn't going to, he know he wasn't going to have the best verse, especially when Pusha T says, Range Rove, Leather Roof, Love War, and for truth, still move a bird like I'm in bed with Mother Goose. You're not gonna say anything better than that. So right. it's just like, <laughs> like but but I think I think Pusha has he's really one of my favorites too. And it's not because he's talking <laughs> drug drug rap, it's more of um the way he puts it together with his words too. One of the one I and, and people think I'm crazy when I say this. One of the top, in my eyes, one of the top ten lyricists of all time. He might just be because because of the fact that you could talk about the same thing and it still be interesting, and people forget, he, he ain't been talking about this for 10 years because he put out his first solo in 2011. He's been talking about this since 2000 with his brother. Right. And it's and he got better. Like his verse on um, that Freddie Madlib album. Oh my God. Like it's just, it's, it's, it's too much. Uh, my whole thing is whatever yeah, artist, whatever group has three classics straight out the back. Like it's arguably he might have had three classics, like yeah, him and Outkast. And then his albums then don't Outcast. his albums aren't trash neither. They like they might not sell like they should, but like they not trash. Like his albums, I would say his albums are uh, the last one, damn near perfect. The King Push joint, damn near perfect. Like they, those right. albums are. Crazy. If you listen to all those albums now, a lot of them still play well. Oh man, crazy. Um, but to answer, sorry, once again, going down the rabbit hole. No, to, answer, right. to answer your direct question, I'm going to go with verse two off of uh, Gorgeous from Dark Twist of Fantasy. That's, um, uh, is hip hop just a euphemism for a new religion? The soul music of the slaves that the, the youth is missing? But this is more than just my road to redemption. Malcolm West got the whole nation standing at attention. That's how it starts. Um, when I first heard that, yeah, my fucking head exploded. I was like, "What the, what the, what the, what the, what is he talking about? What is a right. euphemism? Hip hop?" And then, like, when you look it up, it's and retroactively now in my mm -hmm. head, I'm like, it, it, it kind of hurts me because I'm like, "There's no way he wrote that shit." 
<laughs> there's, 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 there's no way he wrote that. What, what album was this? Because he might have had a, a big part though in it. This, this is Dark Fantasy. This is the one where he brought everybody in. He, he might have had like but, four bars and then someone else helped him finish it. It's it's possible. It's possible. Um, and maybe I'll look up the writing credits in a second because I think that was the first album where he started putting everybody who was part of the writing process on the actual album. I'm pretty sure it was Dark Fantasy. There wasn't... He, he didn't do the ghostwriting thing. It was like, nah, this person helped write this song. If Malik Youssef, which for those who don't know, that's one of his, that was one of his writers. In the beginning, him and Ron Fest, I think for sure. Yeah, but Youssef was around almost until like Life of Pablo. Like he, he was even around during like the Yeezus times. So he's yeah. been around for a long time. But um, that sounds to me like something Malik Youssef would say. Hip hop is a euphemism for new religion. That sounds like a because Malik Youssef is a poet, um, and for those who are like, oh, all oh, rap is a poet, he's like the traditional poet. So that sounds to me like a Malik Youssef line. If I don't see his name there, that's even more amazing. If that Kanye actually wrote that, because that was nice. you should look up the writers. Is he is he yeah, on that? We look it up now. Yeah. Um, at, well, actually, I think Genius and shout out to Genius by the way, man. They they went from being just a lyric site to like this this like multimedia conglomerate, like it's, it's ridiculous, it's crazy. Um, sometimes they show the production and writing credits, but because it's on my phone, it's not, uh, it's not coming up. Up and up. Look it up really quick. Um, by the way, what, while I'm looking it up, what's your, what's your fifth? My fifth is um, Never Let Me Down with Kanye, and I believe that song's featuring Jay-Z, but... Mm. He said, I get down from my grandmother, father, who took my mama. Mother, and made her, right. Folks, and, to and, eat. At the, the tender age, age of six, six she was arrested for the sit ins. And now, with that in my blood, I was born to be different. That actually, you now, know what? Really quick, I'm just saying. That's, <laughs> yeah. that, that verse right there, that was another verse that I related to a lot because my mom was born in the 60s. And when she Same. was six, well, born in the 50s, actually, my mom, and she dealt. If she came from Panama here early mm. and moved down south, she would have to deal with a lot of those color things. And I'm sure she did up here, but it was more hidden than it was down there. Now, my mom is from Jamaica, so I don't know what... I, I've never really asked about, like, the racial dynamic, because there are racial dynamics. There, but I, don't, I don't know exactly what they are, but I mm. do know that she turned six when Martin Luther King was killed. She was mm. 68. So that that line always stuck to me in my head because that connection immediately came to me. Like when my mom was six, Martin Luther King was killed. So it like, so it, it just made me relate to that verse um, like immensely. But let's see, dark fantasy. So gorgeous, gorgeous was written. Gorgeous was written. Oh, oh oops, clicked the wrong thing. Track list, there we go. The writers on gorgeous are Wes Wilson, Ernest Wilson. I don't know who that is. Oh, no ID. So he helped produce it. So he's just there. He's not a uh, Ryan. Okay, that, that was a, it. Was it was Ryan Fest? That was definitely a Ryan Fest bar because Ryan Fest <laughs> is, is is a writer on here. Um, okay. I don't know who Jones is. I don't know if that's Malik. Oh yeah. Oh, never mind. Malik Yus Malik Yusef and Ryan Fest are writers on this song. So. Yeah. Yeah, that one. I'm I'm gonna say that's a that's a more than likely a Malik Yusef bar. <laughs> that's definitely a Malik Yusef bar. It, it 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 has to. Now let's be clear. When we say that Kanye has writers, I don't think Kanye is sitting in a room where he's not where, putting anything down. I think he puts stuff yeah. down. They put stuff down, and then he puts it all together as like a gumbo sauce. I think. So yeah, what it seems like is, and it's not just him that does this. It seems like he, based off like leaks that we've had from Kanye, where it's been like, you're telling, you could tell he's freestyling. It seems like he goes in there, he hears the beat and he freestyles something, mm -hmm. but he'll freestyle and then obviously he'll mess up a little bit. And then he'll go to somebody like, yo, what do you think I could put here? Because especially this past, like two years ago, or last, when did um, the Jesus is King album drop? That was last year, right? Last year, I, I know um, Pusha T brothers helped him out a lot because it's like gospel verses and rap, and I know he yeah. wrote a little bit on that. Right, and I think also too, no malice. 
Excuse me. No, ma- no malice, Chase. Now I'm about to say malice, no malice. Um, but a lot of leaks came from that album when it was supposed to be called Yandi, I guess. And um, a lot of the leaks, he's like, but a band of uh, and then it was like he'll just mumble and then he'll say like maybe one line and then mumble a little bit more and then he'll catch like a little bit of a flow and then he'll mumble again. Like, so it sounds like he's going in there and just doing what comes to him. And then he'll go to somebody and be like, yo, what do you think I should put here? And then maybe he'll write a line after. And then it becomes more of a collaborative effort like that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very collaborative, but like it's not, it's not like a like somebody wrote the whole verse for him. No, I think right. he takes a little bit and then right. I don't instead think it's a Diddy situation. Well, yeah. It's like instead of people giving him the hook, they give him bars within his own bars and then he, mm-hmm. he adds them all up, kind of thing. Right, exactly. So let me so, let me finish verse five for me. Um Oh yeah, my bad. Go ahead. Um to to ballot to choose leadership, but we can't make it to Jacob and to the dealership. So I hear new music and I just don't be feeling it. Racism is still alive. They just concealing it. Yeah. But I know they don't want me in the damn club. They even made me show ID to get inside of That's Sam's club. Sam's club. I've, I've done did dirt and went to church to get my hands scrubbed. I swear I've been baptized the last three or four times. But in the land where ends praise you, cons are getting paid. It's going to take a lot more than coupons to get us saved. Like, it takes a lot more than do-rags to get you waves. Nothing that sad as the day my girl father passed away. So I promised Mr. Rainey I'm going to marry your daughter. And you know I'm going to thank you for the way that she was brought up. And I know that she was smiling when you see the car I bought her. And you sent tears from heaven when you see my car get bowled up. But I can't complain what the accident did to my left eye. Because look at what the accident did to my left eye. First of Leah and I, Romeo must die. I know I have. I got angels watching me from the other side. And then the Romeo he's talking about, I don't think people realize it's not it's not the movie Romeo Must Die, really. It's really the um guy Romeo Santana from the Steve Harvey show of the play right. based in Chicago when he I think he got killed or whatever. Like, yeah, he was murdered, yeah. 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 So I think that's who he's really referring to. I think people sometimes get that bar confused. Yeah, I think it's the you know the triple. It's a play because uh, also Aaliyah was in that yeah. movie though too. Right, but right, he's really right. talking about another individual that's right. name is actually Romeo. And he was also uh, he also died in a car, not an accident. He was murdered, but he was also in a car as well. So like plane crash, car crash, car murder, like it's all Crazy. it's all like a, a driving a, a theme. Yeah, there. that 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 action that verse is actually um, is that in your top five somewhere else? It's. It's two or one. I don't. I, there's there's another really? one here. Yeah. Damn. That means we already got to your top. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna say it's two. Yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's two. Then I'm gonna say it's two. I'm gonna say it's number okay. two. Okay. Just so because of what you, every everything that you just said, it that that it resonates. Was, it took yeah. me to another place. Like right. that's a verse that I listen to now, and I still get chills. Just because the other thing is, although it wasn't his song, that's one of the few times that Jay got bested on a song. No, no, no. That was his song, and Jay still got him on the song. Is what I picked everything that was off of a Kanye catalog. I didn't pick out anything he featured on. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that I, what I oh I, I worded it weird. Jay Jay usually beats everybody on no matter what song he's on. Nah, that yeah. was one of the few times. Even and I said even though it wasn't Jay's song, that's what I meant. Even though it wasn't Jay Z's song. He still got bested on that because Kanye went to another place. Like, cause nah, he, I don't know. Jay Z said some things Jay's he never heard him say before. Let's be clear. When First, I said, got their ears. Now I got their heart. Like, he, uh, if you listen to what he said, it's see, we take up it together. Debate. Watch him take it apart. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But see, that's a great, amazing class. Just like his verse on Renegade, classic verse. Eminem bested him on that one. But I just think with, when it came to Kanye, when you hot, I'm hot. When my when your feet cold, mine's are sizzling. Like I don't know. I think I think, no, I think you, Jay got it. I'm a, no. You know what I'm gonna tell you? It's really the second verse that because I think it was, the second verse it was it was a good verse, but it kind of was it was kind of yeah. unnecessary. He should just this either. this and Jay, and then that could have ended it for this song. Exact. Now, if that would have happened, I might have a different perspective. But because the extra Jay verse was on there, it was. It was it was just extra. It was a good verse, but after Kanye and then the poem and then the quiet, like I just felt like it was like this didn't need to be here really. Right. And especially the way it ended, because it was like every um holds a living legend and I'll tell you why. 
everybody want to be Hove and Hove still alive. And I think that that line, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be a rapper. I, I don't, I don't want to get like banned from the Rock Nation brunch. But that line fell flat to me when I was younger because I was like, it didn't really, yeah. like, it was just there. Like, it wasn't like he said anything that was, because I thought he was about to say something crazy. And then he said that. And I was like, I mean, well, that is what would make you, <laughs> like, I guess it just made too much sense. Like, it didn't, like, confuse me like everything else. Yeah, I actually did a top six by accident. So if you have like an honorable mention, well, I had six. That I, I, I don't know. I don't All know right. Well, there, then, so. well, then I'll make that my number six then. Okay. So, so what's your what's your number five then?